How much should you charge for custom music for a project? Let's talk about it. Whenever we start talking about money and charging rates, most people get uncomfortable, especially when it comes to music, because there's something about the personal artistic attachment to our work that it becomes really hard to know from a third party perspective, what's the value of it and how do we charge for our music? So I'm gonna give you three ways that are tried and true methods for how you can start to charge for what your time is worth. Number one, charge by the hour. Now, if you are starting off as a younger composer, then you probably have a lot of time, honestly. So if you don't yet feel comfortable to charge for a large project or a bunch of tracks, then charging by the hour is going to be the most practical way that you can send an invoice and you can bill an itemized list of how many hours it took you to write your music. Now, if you're gonna take this approach, then I strongly suggest making your hourly rate quite low so that as you build your time, as you build your experience, you can start to charge higher amounts and use some of the other techniques discussed later. So usually in the video game world, this is the most popular way of doing it because when we're talking about an hourly rate, well, let's say a piece of music is a minute long. And if you know that it takes you about three, four hours to create that piece of music, not including revisions, then you understand that your time is now equal to that three to four hours. That's gonna be your dollar amount. So let's pick a number. Let's say $200 for that three hours of your time. So that's really boiling it down to something like $50 to $75 per hour. That's not bad. Obviously much better than a lot of other jobs and you're doing something you love. So I think starting off, that's a great way to explain it in an invoice. So what you would do for the game developer is you would send an invoice that specifically says custom music times three hours and you put the rates which whatever you decide 50 75 dollars and they would multiply it out and there you have an invoice that's very practical and at the indie level that's why i mentioned video games the indie developers are going to understand that because they understand how many hours they're pouring into their craft and that's how artists are gonna charge sometimes. That's how coders and programmers are gonna charge. So they understand the vernacular of using this hourly wage. Number two, charge by the track. If you are more experienced and you start to feel more comfortable with sending your invoices and your bills, then I would strongly advise to sit in this second category, which is to charge by the track. So in the previous example, we talked about in the video game world, how if you're track if let's say one minute long if you know that it takes you on a regular basis three to five hours then you can comfortably charge a set price for that track because you know generally how long it's going to take you if you're not as comfortable then go back to the hourly rate because you just don't know if it's going to take you 10 hours or not especially starting off but if you really know and you have a system for how you're going to create your tracks then i would go for this and with this in mind, you have a little bit more of a negotiating room because you could say maybe $500 for a piece of music. It doesn't really matter the length because you know how long it takes you. Because in all honesty, a one minute track is gonna take you just about as long as a one and a half minute track, or maybe even a two minute track, three minute track, just depends on the instrumentation, right? And the genre and the style and, and all those components. So that is probably a sweet spot for most of you because it allows you to kind of sit and use the hourly approach in your billing but it allows you to charge a set rate for that specific track so on an invoice very similarly you would in this case you'd actually say that your rate is per track or perhaps per minute. So let's say that you're asked to create a two minute piece of music, then you'd say that your rate is, let's say $200 per minute of music. So 200 times two equals 400. 
and there's the bill makes sense once again this is very valuable for indie game developers in particular because they understand the price per minute of music model number three charge per project now in the film world this is by far the most valuable method of charging because in the film world you are working with so many variables such as revisions such as spotting sessions such as phone calls there's a lot more communication usually involved in this process and it's usually over a very short amount of time so what this means is you will usually get booked for two to three weeks and that's all you're doing is working on this one film and so it makes a whole lot more sense to charge based around that time frame of your life versus a video game which is going to take you sometimes six months up to three years it could be a very long amount of time so the previous models of charging usually make more sense for that because the budgets are less certain in the film world the budgets are usually very clear and they're usually completely inflexible because there's a line item in the production company's budget for all of the, the cast and the crew all the way down to the music and it's usually just a very static number that will not change but for that reason this third method of charging for the entire project makes a whole lot more sense because you have no idea how long it's going to take you but you know that you have a deadline that's very short term usually in those few weeks span so it just makes a lot more sense because you're no longer trading your time for dollars per se but you're just saying this entire project is worth this much so that definitely brings up the question okay then how much do i charge well my personal method for doing this is to decide it for this month of my life what are my biggest needs and so recently i did a documentary film where i'm in the process of building a pc to switch over from mac to pc um, and to invest in some gear and so i actually tallied up the cost what would it cost to build exactly the machine that i need to continue doing my business and then i also tallied up the cost of any sample instruments or gear upgrades needed to do this project well and then a couple other expenses such as home bills and things like that it just so happens that my wife's birthday was this past month and so i decided you know what i want to set aside a certain budget to be able to spend on that and so I tallied all these things up, came up with a number, and that was the number that I pitched to the production company. And here's the funny part. They had a budget that was lower than that, but because I presented my case and because it was such a short time frame in my situation, it just so happened that they honored that request. And it just so happens that I'm now able to do another film with them. And I just had a budget discussion with them as well. And it didn't go exactly the same way, but because they, they did have an inflexible budget for this next project. However, it never hurts to ask. And in this second project, I actually was able to get a larger amount than their inflexible budget yet again, specifically because I set aside a different request for sample instruments to aid their project. Because you gotta think about this. From a production perspective, they want the best production possible. They are hiring you and they know that you have a specific rate for your time, for your service. So they're willing to pay that up to a certain amount. But what's really nice is anytime that you can create a separate category, a separate invoice for another item, for example, a creative fee is one thing, but a music production fee is a different thing. They don't see them as, as one check coming to me. Instead, they're thinking of it as two separate items. So the creative fee pays for the composition and the eventual production of it, but the music production fee is actually covering the cost of me acquiring new instruments that are very specific to this picture. And this works in video games, TV, and in film. It just depends on your situation. So ultimately, this project-based methodology is really going to be the best place for you to negotiate. And one bonus tip to leave you with, anytime someone approaches you to hire you for your music, you are on the negotiating high ground. Versus when you approach them, you won't be. 
So always position yourself, always add value to people so that they will approach you. And in doing so, you always have the last word because you could always say no, but they're the ones who need your help versus the opposite. So always try to position yourself that way so that you can always ask for the proper rate and you don't have to do as much negotiating because you are the one on the higher ground. Thanks for watching guys. If this video is helpful for you, hit the like button and smash that subscribe button. Help us get to 50,000 subscribers this year. We're on our way to do it and I know we can do it here in 2018. What do you think? Did I leave out any tips for how to set your rates? Let us know down in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you next time.